Madame Pong herself. Well, the Domino XL DF700 has finally arrived. I was fortunate enough to get on a preview list, so I have this here for a couple months ahead of time, so I could do you know, reviews, videos, use them, so you'll get a chance to see them uh, both in this review video that I'm doing now, as well as a couple uh, sort of calibration technique videos that I'll be producing as well. Uh, along with just the usual podcast that I have, I'll be using this on a couple different projects. Now, Domino XL DF700 is a mouthful, so a long time ago I coined Domizilla as the name, so that's what I'm probably going to refer to it half the time, simply because it's a whole lot easier to say. And it's kind of appropriate once you see the size of this thing. So what's it look like? Well, let's go open the case. It comes in a Sys5 T-Lock case, and it's got the nice molded top on it to help hold everything. So this one here, they put a lot of extra thought in to make sure that the case itself, a single box, would be all that you'd need to bring on a job site if you're using job site work. Of course, comes with a power cable. Very interesting. And then this is the Domazilla itself. Now, for a comparison, it completely dwarfs the 500. Now, remember that the 500 and the 700 both are available. This isn't replacing the 500. The 500 isn't being retired at all. Now, in this review, I'm going to go over all the moving parts and sort of give you a good tour of the whole domino. Along the way, I'll provide a couple just notable differences between this and the 500. I'm not going to make this a complete comparison between the two, because they are different tools being used for different types of projects. Now, I'll put Domazilla aside for a moment so we can go through the sustainer, and then we can have some fun with the tool itself. Now, the Domino XL is shipped with one bit. It's a 12 millimeter bit. They store it up here, so it's nice that you actually have room for all four available bits for the Domazilla. Further in the case, Near the back, since the Domazilla gets stored up here in the front, near the back they've included two bins for storing some dominoes if you're going and doing some site work. Now these are nice that they're partitioned in variable partitions. You do get an assortment of 12 by 100 dominoes, so at least they have something to play with on day one. And I'd highly recommend that what you do with those dominoes the first day is calibrate the, the cursor hairs on your fence in case they're out of calibration. And I have a separate video that's going to show you that. They'll be released tomorrow. So digging deeper in this SIS-5, you can see that there's a couple other pockets here. We've got one for the manual. Now, the manual itself, actually, it's a little different. They've uh, adopted a different format for the cover so that you can fold the cover. And then you have some holes here. So once you do that, presumably, you can put it in some Festool binder. But I don't know where that binder comes from. It's probably not available in North America. But fortunately, Festool took a cue from Whitman Samplers, and they gave you this little sheet here. It gives you a list of all the different accessories that go with it, but best, it gives you a packing chart so you know where things can go inside the sustainer, because there are some available slots that are not filled when you first get the domino. So continuing our search of the Sys5, you'll find that there's a base widener of sorts, and I'll show you how this gets used on it. It gets tucked away there in the back. And then, of course, the wrench that we'll be using for removing and inserting the bit. So with that, I'm going to put the sustainer aside and we'll go through the domino. So as you can see, the Domozilla is considerably larger than the 500 unit. Now, if you found this video through a search or something and you actually are looking for specific information about the DF500, the normal size domino, I do have three videos that go through it in great detail. And that one would actually be better suited to you than this video since there are some pretty big differences between the two models. So Domazilla has very much the same anatomy as the original DF500. You've got a fence that's removable, you've got a body with the motor, and then of course you've got the oscillating bit that's captured inside of the fence. Now the fence unit itself is used for registering where you're going to be placing the mortises. So if we were to treat this as some stock here, of course you can use it on the flat to plow a mortise there. Or if you were trying to do something on an angle, you tip down the fence, lock it into position, and now you can register a distance from the top surface. So using these type of registrations, you can achieve flush joints. Now this lever here on the side is the one that I loosened in order to set this fence all the way down for doing a cut basically into, say, the edge of some stock. But you can place it at various bevel angles, and they do have some positive locks for that. So if you're trying to make, say, an eight-sided box or a six-sided box, you're going to have some positive stops in order to make those type of projects. Now one thing I would caution you on is that if you're using this at an angle, the depth from the fence, from the bottom part right down here to the bit, is not the same as what you set. So you're going to want to verify that. Now the second setting that you use on the fence is setting the height of the fence to the reference surface of the stock. Now that's set with a lever that's here on the side. You loosen this up and it can slide up and down for setting the height. And there is a scale located here on the side of the fence. And there's also sort of a quick setting down here. So when you raise this up, you can slide it over to the number that you want and that's going to be the distance from this surface here to the center of the bit when you're plowing those mortises. 
So it makes it a little bit easier that you don't have to try lining up a, a cursor here onto a number on that other scale. You can just use these quick sets. Now this is a place where there is a significant difference between the DF500 and the Domazilla. In the DF500, the quick set guides were actually set to the thickness of the stock. So whatever number was shown here, half of that value was the distance from the fence to the center of the bit. Another part of this fence are some registration pins that are located here. They are retractable, which they're retracted right now. If I press this button, they snap out. Now, you're getting three per side, but you can actually press them down and you can retract individual ones. So you can pick and choose the ones that you want. And I'll go over in a demonstration a little later in a separate video that's going to show you how to use those pins to be able to tie out a number of mortises together or simply to be able to start certain types of mortises without having to refer to a pencil line. Now the fence itself includes some registration marks here on the bottom. This one here is marking the center of the bit. So you can use this when you're trying to do certain type of mortises where say you need to stand the unit up. So you would be able to stand the unit up like this to plow down and you'd be able to do, line it up to a pencil mark or any other registration mark. And then there's additional marks here that indicate where the pins are located. So if you're marching across using pins as spacing, you would still be able to use these marks to continue on in places where the pins aren't allowed to be used. So I, for one, am happy that the pins have returned. Now to change the bit, you remove the fence. There's a little latch here that you use that you lift this to release the lock on it to be able to pull the fence right off. Now it's kind of recessed, so you're not going to be able to get your finger in there and do it because they want you to use the wrench for it. You just pop that in there and just push it straight up and it unlocks. That's uh, a nice feature to keep it like that, that you can't possibly use your fingers because you would want, wouldn't want something to hit that and accidentally release the fence while you're doing some work with it. So it just slides right off. Now the fence also includes an integral dust port that's going to be pulling all the chips. Now this tool acts exactly like a router, so when you're plunging down you're going to be getting an oscillating bit going back and forth cutting out the hole. So you're producing a lot of chips that need to get evacuated in order to get a clean hole. So you definitely want to run this all the time with a dust extractor, especially when you're making the deeper mortises that you can make with a Domazilla. So I'll put the fence aside, and now we can go ahead and put the bit on. The bits for dominoes, they're proprietary bits, they actually have, are threaded, so it's just going to screw into the end here. Now there is a ratchet lock so that when you get all the way down here, of course I'm turning, but now it's turning the motor. So there's a ratchet lock on the side here, just press that in, and then it'll lock into place, and then you can tighten it the rest of the way with the wrench. Now, of course, it's possible that once in a while you're going to put something on there and it's just going to be really hard to take off. There is a flat set of facets that are actually on the oscillating portion of the domino. This wrench is a 12 millimeter wrench that comes with it, but if you have your own 10 millimeter wrench, of course, you can put it on here. And now this will facilitate removing bits that are a little harder to get out. So that's a nice feature so you don't have to crank on this with your fingers. Now, it's not going to cut really well with that. Now a couple other parts of this body before I put the fence on so it's a little easier to see. Anything that's green is basically something that you're going to want to adjust, with a couple exceptions. Here on the side is the plunge depth limit. So the plunge depth can go anywhere from 15 to 70 millimeters in 5 millimeter increments. So you just press this button and you can slide it around. Now they have these other two buttons that are here that can act as limits. So it's nice that you can slide this over and now you can't go past that point either way. So it's handy if you're doing offset mortises. With an offset mortise, what you do is, say you have a 100 millimeter long stick, you might put 65 millimeters in one side and 35 millimeters into the other side in order to create the 100. But when you're dealing with something like that, you're often changing the depth. It's nice that you could set the two extremes with this and simply slide the slider to either side to lock it into place. Now we already talked about the release, that's for removing the plunger for the fence. Then on this side here is the ratchet for the bits. If we take a look at a couple other parts, this latch here is for controlling the width of the mortise. Up here there's two widths selectable. The smaller looking hole is for an exact size width mortise. It's going to be exactly the size of the domino width. The larger size is for this width plus three millimeters. So it gives you a little bit of play so that you can do things like lining up and aligning. Now changing it is by flipping this latch. However, you're supposed to flip this latch just like a clutch. Make sure you do it while the motor is running. Last little bit of green, the power switch. It's actually a very nice design for the ergonomics because of the way that you can easily hold it down at a, at a good level and it's comfortable for your arm. So I'm finding that you just, you know, hands, you don't really need your thumb much just to flip the switch. So overall the ergonomics of this are very, very nice. If they had made a long handle like the 500 on a machine this heavy, it would have been really hard on your wrists. Whereas this design is perfect for the lighter machine. Now as a last part of this fence before I put it back on the machine is that you've got a cursor window in here. And what it does is it shows you where the center line is. When you're making mortises where you're marking it by a pencil line, 
you're going to be lining that up, and you need that to be accurate to the center of the mortise. Now, when I received my Domazilla, the first thing I did with it is I mortised a couple holes to verify the calibration of the cursor. So, I just got some simple MDF, plowed a hole in there using a line, a very accurate line cut from tape, put that together, and I'm getting just flush, flush edges on it. So, this thing is in perfect calibration for me from the factory. Now, when I received my 500, it was absolutely not in calibration. So what I suggest to you is if you were to pick up either domino is to make sure that the first thing you do is calibration. And I do have a video that I'll be releasing this week that shows the calibration. It's very, very fast to do, and hopefully you'll have nothing to do when it's already calibrated. So reassembling, just line up the plunge rods, slide them in until you get the click. Now, one of the accessories that you receive with a Domazilla is this sort of base widener. What this does is it attaches to two screws that are on the bottom of the fence. Slide that up and screw this in. And what it does is it gives you a wider base when you're doing a plunge vertically like this. Now, you're probably thinking, well, there's, that's a pretty good base right there. But usually, you wouldn't be plowing into something like this. Typically, you'd be plunging into something smaller like this trying to put it in the middle in which case this is really going to help out now this accessory is the same accessory that you have with your domino 500 for widening the base these holes have the same spacing that they did on the 500 so one of the benefits of that is that if you have any third party accessories like this that use those holes all of these accessories will carry over and work with the xl with that said though one caveat is that if you're using the self-centering guide this one here is accurately positioned to the size of the fence with these spacers. So you're going to want to recalibrate for this fence. Whenever you switch between fences on these units, you would have to recalibrate this. Now if you ordered the Domino XL, just the Domino XL, you would get this base widener and the kit that I showed you in the SIS 5. If you order the Domazilla kit, you will also get the cross stops. Now these are modified versions of the previous cross stops available for the 500. In fact, these are going to replace those. So just so you know, you may already have these if you've seen a newer version of a Domino 500. What these do is they attach to the sides of the fence to allow you to do additional registration using the pins that are on these stops. All it does is it just slides up in a little dovetailed way here. So you slide that up and then you crank it down. Now you've got this registration pin that can be locked into the side of a hole for doing equal spacing along boards. This is mostly useful, especially with the 500, for doing panel glue-ups. For this one here, if you're doing larger structures, it might be handy if you need to uh, lay out an array of holes. Now, just so you know how this one works, the difference is, is that this portion here is removable and you can flip it. You can flip it for uh, 500 offset or 700 offset. The difference being how high this pin is in order to get it in line with the other pins. So this isn't an accessory that you're going to use a lot, but when you need it, it's really handy to have. So you might want to take that into consideration when you're taking a look at the XL versus the XL kit. Now it turns out that the price difference between the XL and the XL kit is basically the price of buying these retail. So you might be able to hold off on those until you decide whether or not you're going to need them. Now a couple other accessories. These are accessories from Festool that actually work on the 500 as well. This one here is a trim stop and this one here is a handrail guide. Now the trim stop is usable when you want to try say mortising a number of times in the ends of styles. If you're doing face frames, if you're doing it for a whole kitchen, you're going to have a bunch of these to do, and you don't want to be lining up to a pencil line. So what you do is you snug this over the fence. You're just going to tip the fence down, because you need to get away from these latches here, and you just slide it over the top. It simply hugs the fence. And then there's some simple locks here that lock the fence into position. So now what you would be able to do is you'd be able to size the stock, place it in here, make these adjustments to squeeze it, and then you can repeatedly go through. Now this does not center. What it'll do is it'll set it to wherever you want. So you're going to want to center the first one or at least pick the position that you want for the first one. And then you can go and run through 50 or 60 in a row. This is a real time saver if you're doing something like face frames for a kitchen. Now the handrail accessory works the same way as the trim stops. Except this one here has a little bit of a cusp here so that when you're trying to work on, say, some handrails, it gives you some decent registration on these rounded surfaces for being able to place mortises for doing joining, whether it's for a scarf joint or maybe some of the mitered ends. Now, if you remember, our SIS-5 had some extra ports and storage areas in there. If we take a look now, of course, we have the base widener. It goes right back where it came from on this one, if I can flip it around. But in the back here, we have two additional slots. These are perfect for placing these additional optional guides if you have them for storage. 
Now normally you'd put the domino boxes above that. Now the trim stops, they'll also fit down here. They just fall into a little hole. They look like they're sticking up too high, but it turns out the Domazilla easily clears that. Of course you can put your manual there. Now I have the two domino tenon assortments. They are actually divided up because there are four different size bits. There's an assortment for the smallest two sizes and an assortment for the largest two sizes. The kits use these same boxes that you saw on the inside of the Domazilla for sorting out the dominoes, which is really nice since they're nice and partitioned. Makes it a little easier too that if you wanted to take a few of them to a different job site, you could swap them around between the two different boxes. Now this assortment here is for the 8mm and 10mm bits. So since your Domazilla came with a 12mm bit, you're going to get both of those bits in this 10 in assortment. In the case of the 12 and 14, since you already have a 12, you'll only be receiving a 14 millimeter bit. And that actually explains the price difference between these two kits. So if we take a look at some of these bits a little closer, these are solid carbide bits. So these things last a long time. Now these ones here are even more stout than the ones that were on the 500. And they also still have a screw. Now the threading on this is different than the 500. So you can't use those bits interchangeably. I know you were thinking that. So the sizes of tenons that you can get and use with a DF700 is pretty vast, actually. You've got the smallest one here is an 8mm by 50 domino, which is a size that the DF500 can mortise, but all the way up to a 14mm by 140mm domino bit over here, which actually a friend of mine didn't realize was a domino when he came over here. He thought it was a stick of wood. So you can see with the various thicknesses and the, and the lengths of these tenons that you could actually do a lot of types of joinery now. Of course, a smaller table would easily be serviced by some of these 8mm or 10mm smaller tenons here, especially if you're doing something like a small shaker-ish table with a small leg to apron joint, that would be well serviced with that. Now, if you're doing something larger, say you're doing some outdoor projects or just, you know, massive furniture, something like an armoire, then these other ones here would probably be much better suited to that project. Now, I think one of the key joints that benefits from these larger dominoes is going to be a leg to apron joint. There's a lot of stress that's involved on there, especially depending on how you build the rest of it. But, you know, legs get kicked, they get moved. Having a really good joint there is going to help with these longer tenons. Now, one thing you're going to notice is that even though these ones here get large, they didn't get wider. And that can be a surprise to people. The way dominoes are sized, they're always, the width is always 13.5 millimeters plus the width of the bit. So that would be 13.5 plus 8, 10, 12, or 14 millimeters. So that's why they're still pretty narrow. That has to do with the oscillating action of the machine. It always oscillates the same amount. Now, if you need wider dominoes than these stock dominoes, there are ways that you can use a domino for making repeatable size holes that are larger for use with some homemade domino stock. Now, I did produce a video that shows how to do that using the 500. However, all the methods are applicable to the 700. And this was a board that I created for that back then and it shows how you can make very wide mortises even with a smaller machine. So if you've got some stock that you can use for this, I mean, these are great for some leg to apron joints with the 500, then you can easily apply that to the larger domino settings that you have available with the Domazilla. Now there is other domino stock available for the Domazilla. It actually comes in stick form. So what you would get is you can either get an eight millimeter, 10, 12, or 14 millimeter domino stock but it's in a large stick so that you can cut your own lengths. Now that's very handy with something like Domazilla where you can set plunge depths from 15 millimeters up to 70. So you could you know, create something that's a, kind of an oddball size but something that works for you for a particular project. Now of course these other dominoes are you can completely cut those yourself as well and I do quite often in my podcasts but it's nice that you can get sort of a stock. If that's something that you do a lot of, you might be better served by grabbing the longer sticks and simply cutting them as you go. I have a separate demo video that I'll be producing with showing you the different plunge cuts and a number of different types of joints and how to do them properly using the Domazilla or with the 500. They're both the same techniques. And also I'll take you on a small tour of a couple different projects that I've made that used custom sized dominoes with the 500. Now some of those I could have used stock dominoes with the 700 and been a lot easier but also some of those use larger sizes and it'd be interesting to show you how those work because that could take advantage of the cut your own tenon stock that's available now for the 700. And remember that two of the sizes for the 700 are also available for the 5. So you can get the 8mm or 10mm domino stock, cut your own length stock, and use it with your 500. Now and speaking of the cut your own tenon stock, if you're doing outdoor projects, these are beach tenons. They're going to work out all right in outdoor projects as long as you make sure that they're going to be sealed well from the elements. However, some projects might prefer to use SIPO tenons. Now this is a SIPO tenon. It happens to be the same size as this 850 down here. These are SIPO tenons that you would typically use for outdoor projects that maybe don't have a lot of finish on them because this is going to be more rot resistant. Now for the XL700, 
there aren't going to be a tenant assortment like this in SIPO. Instead, it's only available in the Cut Your Own Tenant stock. Well, there you go. That's a bit of a whirlwind tour of the Domino XL DF700 and its uh, tenant assortments. I gotta admit, thanks for an impressive stack. There you go. It's portable if you've gone to the gym. <laughs>